Hello new viewers, I am DS, your psychologist and welcome to another episode on Channel 8. In this episode, we are going to do one final compatibility episode with the ENTJ. And the 16th MBTI type that we are doing would be the ESFJ. Why did I leave the ESFJ as the last MBTI type to do for the ENTJ compatibility series? This is because I really have no concept of the ESFJ. I find that this is a very hard episode to do. Whenever I think of the ESFJ, the first thing that comes into my mind is the lead protagonist of a Taiwanese drama or a Korean drama. In those Taiwanese or Korean dramas, the protagonist is always an ESFJ. Oh, you can't sell the house. That is our father's blood and flesh. He will be so heartbroken. Oh, I can feel the heartbreak. <sighs> so in those dramas, the ESFJ is always seen trying to solve their own family problems. They are willing to sacrifice themselves and they have a lot of missed opportunities. I think that is why all the Taiwanese dramas last for like 800 episodes. If the protagonist were an ENTJ, I think 10 episodes finish already. <laughs> so in either the Korean drama or the Taiwanese drama, the lead actor or the lead actress, in this case the ESFJ, is always there to help other people. He does things systematically, following tradition. As an ENTJ, whenever I watch Korean dramas or Taiwanese dramas, I get very angry. Because when I look at this ESFJ, I say, why are you so stupid? <laughs> I just cannot understand the ESFJ in those Korean dramas or Taiwanese dramas. So suppose after two years, this ESFJ finally got a date with a person that he has been secretly admiring for a very long time. Then, they arrange to meet at 7 p.m. at a cafe or something like that. Then, at 6.45 p.m., on his way to the cafe, he receives a call from the family and saying that he must go back immediately because something has happened. Then, he just goes back. Oh, I cannot understand this at all. But I presume these people do exist in the Korean culture or the Taiwanese culture a lot because I think that ESFJs are very prevalent in those cultures. But of course, those ESFJs are just fictional movie or drama characters. But they have already gotten me very angry. Because I say, how can they behave like this? They can put their family or friends ahead of their loved ones. This one I can accept, but as you're watching the movie, it just gets me boiling. Why are they like this? <laughs> in terms of cognitive stack, this is the cognitive stack of the ENTJ and this is the cognitive stack of the ESFJ. They are really very different. However, in one of our previous episodes, we have already discussed the compatibility between the ENTJ and the ISFJ, whose cognitive stacks are also very different. I mentioned that the ENTJ is actually quite compatible with the ISFJ. So in this case, the ENTJ may not be so compatible with the ESFJ, even though the ESFJ has the same functions as the ISFJ. This is because the ESFJ is a judger. The ISFJ, on the other hand, is a perceiver. So they are slow to judge. They just are very slow in reacting. The ESFJs that I know are very quick to judge and they judge based on their FE which is a very weak function for the ENTJ. The ESFJ is very concerned about connection with others. They are very friendly communicators on the other hand, the ENTJ may not be friendly with everyone. In fact, the ENTJ can be very selective over who they choose as their friends. Personally, I definitely try to avoid the P-types. <laughs> but the ESFJ may not have this distinction. So there is already a clash in social values. Sometimes I also find that the ESFJ is very concerned about recognition and acknowledgement. So they may need a lot of affection when it comes to love. This 
one is okay that ENTJ can give. But sometimes I feel that the ESFJs, those that I know, may have quite low self-esteem because they really place a lot of emphasis on recognition and affection. They seem to like people to praise them. <laughs> Actually, the ENTJ does too. So cannot blame. But one huge problem between the ESFJ and the ENTJ for the ENTJ is that the ESFJ follows rules very rigidly because they have SI as their auxiliary function. Given that the ENTJ has SI as a blind spot, they really do not like to follow rules and they can be very bogged down by paperwork. If the ESFJ is able to help the ENTJ in this area, then there is no problem. However, if SI is something that they are going to quarrel over, then it is a huge problem because it is a chore for the ENTJ to follow rules or to go by the book. The ENTJ is also very motivated by thinking of new ideas and new concepts. Sometimes this concept can be so controversial that the ESFJ may find it very hard to accept. So this is another point where they might not agree. Worse, because the ESFJ is a judger, they might totally dismiss the ideas of the ENTJ right at the beginning. Unlike the ISFJ, who will take time to digest this. Even though the ISFJ may not accept this immediately, they will try to assimilate, but the ESFJ may just totally say, no, it's not going to work, or no, I don't like this. My personal impression of the ESFJ is that they are very friendly people, very generous people who like to share themselves. Other than that, I don't have much impression of the ESFJ. <laughs> My attitude towards the ESFJ is that of indifference. In fact, because the ESFJ may be just nice to everybody, they could have sent out very wrong signals to people making people believe that actually they like them romantically. Luckily for the ENTJ, because we have NI, we would be able to detect if the ESFJ is really interested in us. If an ESFJ does send this kind of signal that they are romantically interested in the ENTJ, the ENTJ will be open to considering the, having the ESFJ as a romantic partner. Why? Because we are indifferent to start off with. There are other MBTI types where we might totally feel, hmm, we have to really consider this. <laughs> One personal observation of the ESFJ is that they can be rather slow. Slow in detecting humor, for example. Why? Because NI is their blind spot. So presume the ENTJ tells a joke to the ESFJ. They might not be able to catch it at all. They're like, what? Especially my yellow jokes. <laughs> yeah, there's no one custom. <laughs> but one funny thing is, once the ESFJ does catch the ENTJ's joke, they will start telling their neighbours about it. Hey, I explained to you, I know already. <laughs> so I think the ESFJ can be quite cute. They are just so full of FE. The need to share with other people. The need to preserve harmony. This one, I think as an ENTJ, I do look up to because after all, FE is considered a super ego cognitive function. However, too much touchy-feely is too much for the ENTJ. It's just... Mm, not my cup of tea. So do I think that a romantic relationship between an ESFJ and an ENTJ is going to work? This is a question mark at this point because I think if the ESFJ and the ENTJ were to go together, one of their main problems is social in nature. The ENTJ is very choosy as a person and can be very fussy who he chooses as his friends but the ESFJ does not have this distinction 
I don't want to be forced to like your auntie. I don't like to be forced to like your friends who are bitchy or whatever. If I only like you and we can be together quietly, that's fine. But the ESFJ really likes to be social. It can take me some time to assimilate into your community. And you have to be patient with me. Also, if an ESFJ were to be with an ENTJ in a romantic relationship, there might be another problem of time because the ESFJ may spend a lot of time with other people, with friends and with uh, their family. The ENTJ is willing to devote much more time to the lover. So there might be an imbalance over here. So this is another potential landmine between the two MBTI types. So voila, we have already finished with all the 16 MBTI types and very soon I'm going to do a consolidation of the 16 MBTI types by choosing the top 8 in the next episode. So do watch out for that. I hope you have enjoyed this episode as well. If you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more MBTI and ENTJ. Okay, I'm going to sign off now and I'll see you in my next episode. Goodbye!